had a different message all planned out for today. And um, I was all excited about it. In fact, I started to share some of it with some people. And then I came in here. Um, I just to, I'll set it up. Uh, what had happened was um, we met with uh, John and Marlene and Kim and ourselves. Uh, we were here on New Year's Eve at a quarter to 12. We came to the front of the church and we decided we'd pray in the new year. And uh, so we stayed outside and we just prayed in the new year. We anointed the church on the corners. We did, uh, you know, we, we prayed in the new year and, and asked God to bless us going forth and, and had all our prayers. And uh, the next day, New Year's Day, I uh, felt compelled to come on up to the church and just come on up and pray in the church on New Year's Day. I sat down on this chair here, and I wasn't in that chair five minutes, and the Lord spoke very clearly to me. And he gave me a word. Now, usually, I don't get a direct word from the Lord. It usually comes through uh, either Pastor Edwin, Pastor Karen, or somebody else. And then I kind of take it, chew on it, ask to talk to the Lord about it. But this one was a direct word to me. And so, and this is what the Lord shared. I want to share you uh, what he said to me and what we're going to be looking like coming in the new year. Um, there's, there's a million, million prophetic words out there about the new year and what it's going to be, but this was a personal word that I heard direct from the Lord for Gateway. And so I wanted to, uh, uh, he just, you know, as I said, I had a different message, and the Lord said, no, I've got a message, <laughs> and you're going to bring this one. So this is what he said, and I was just sitting in the chair, and I just kind of, and the Lord said, rescue the church. Rescue the church. And then he said, and I, I kind of just kind of stopped for a second, thinking, you know what you, you get. You, was that you, Lord? Was that you? But it was him. And then he said this. He said, this will be a year of rescue. This will be a year of rescue. And then he said, be a lifeline. Be a lifeline. And, of course, every time you get a prophetic word, there should be some portion of Scripture that comes with it. This is what he said to me right off the bat. And I didn't even search for this until I was putting this message together. But it came out of Matthew 3, verse 2. It says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then another Scripture came to me just like that. It come out of Luke 10, verse 9. It says, And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom of God has come near you. And then the Lord was very, I, I, just, I was just in awe. First of all, that the Lord would download to me a word. Because I'm used to getting a word from somebody else and then getting into it. And diving into it and searching it and, and testing it. Amen. By the way, you get a prophetic word, always test it. Always test it. And so I've been testing the word. And um, as I said, Luke 10, 9, it says, and he'll, this is Jesus talking. He says, and he'll, this is when he sent out the 72, by the way. When he sent the 72 out, he said, and heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near. Then the Lord was very clear when I was sitting here. He said, we are the kingdom. We are the kingdom. Be at hand. We are the kingdom. Be at hand. And so I got that. That was real clear to me. I, I'm, first of all, I was just glorifying God that he would choose me to speak to. And, and then I started to really dive in. And so here's what I believe, what the Lord is saying. I believe the church is being called to be a rescue operation for two reasons. For two reasons. And I have scripture that I'm going to back this up with. It's, the first one is for those who have strayed away from the truth. 
for those who have strayed away from the truth and those who are lost. There's our two reasons why we have to be rescue operation. Amen? Can I get an amen or a hands up on there? <laughs> Listen, that was the passion of Jesus. And he passed that mission on to you and me, to his church. There's three words that I used in the next part. I called it the know, feel, and do. The know, feel, and do. You see, we know that the mission didn't end at his ascension. We know that because God said it. And we need to feel compelled to help bring the lost and those who have strayed away. Listen, that's a big thing these days. A lot have strayed away. A lot have strayed away. And then we have to do. We have to do. We're the doers. Amen? Are you a doer this morning? Hallelujah. So what kind of challenges and difficulties are we going to face in doing so? There's going to be challenges and difficulties. What is it going to take to be more passionate and effective at this? Because up to now, we haven't battened very good, have we? Well, here's our scripture for today. James 5, 19 and 20. Listen to this. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. That is an amazing scripture. Amen? That is an amazing scripture. These were the final words of James. And they have to do with being a rescue operation. There's your rescue operation scripture. Amen? Cover a multitude of sins. A very fitting conclusion... As James begins his letter talking about endurance and being doers. That's how he starts that scripture. We all know it. Be doers of the word. Amen? So rescuing is a major, major function of the church. We need to make it a priority. Why? Why do we need to make it a priority? Well, for three reasons. For three reasons. First of all, God said it. He said it right here to me on this chair. If God said it, I believe it. Amen? God said it, I'll do it. Secondly, because the brethren may stray. And many have strayed lately. Amen? I use that word stray. I look for synonyms for the word stray. Listen to what it is. Wander. Roam. Straggle. Deviate and get lost. Isn't that amazing? Could be due to hardships or persecution. Boy, are we getting persecuted in the last few days? They could be facing all kinds of trials. Or they just got tired. Have you ever been there? Well, you just got tired? I've been there. I'm not afraid to say I get tired. I don't know how many times I've quit. Only to have the Lord say, are you done? <laughs> Let's go. But it's true. How about bitterness? Boy, is there bitterness in the world today? Anger. Depressed and strayed away. When the focus is taken off God, what happens? We wander, don't we? We need to keep the focus on Him. Amen? Proverbs 12, 26 says, The righteous 
choose their friends carefully. But the wicked, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. I'm going to say that again. The righteous choose their friends carefully. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. I want to say all my friends are online right now. I've chosen wisely. Amen? So it's easy to wander off. Satan knows that and he uses it. According to James, we're to save those who wander away. And thirdly, because the brethren, and get this, and this is rampant today, that brethren may stray from the truth. May stray from the truth. This is huge today. I read the other day, and I was sharing this with some, that there is over 24,000 denominations. And they say that five new ones are popping up every week. Think about that. 24,000. I don't like what that says. Let's start a new denomination and just cut that out. Amen? Or can you believe they corrected me? Come on, we're moving. We're going over here. Oh, we just want the warm and bubblies. If we ever needed the truth, it is today. It is today. Listen to what James calls someone who strays. James calls the one who strays from the truth a sinner. A sinner. This is serious stuff. It's not, nothing to fool with. Amen? It's not just stumbling or an oops. It's serious. And we're talking about being lured away from the truth. This is happening today. So I understand why the Lord said, I want you to be a rescue operation. It doesn't say they, that they strayed from the faith or from the Lord or from the church. It says from the truth. From the truth. Not much wonder there's 24,000 denominations. Can't all be right, amen? So what is the truth? It's, it's more than just what we believe. Take a look at John 3.20. John 3.20 and 21. I'm coming from the New King James Version because I like how they put it. It says, For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. Least his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Notice that he says, practice. Practice evil versus the truth. This is a practice that's going on out there, folks. Amen? Truth is something you practice. Not just agree with. That's why James says, be doers of the word. And he also says this, Faith without works is dead. Amen? How is your faith today? Is it alive? Amen? I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just bringing what I wrote down. <laughs> our faith needs to, you know, our, without works is dead. We need action. You'll know that you are the truth by your actions. By your actions. Amen? Amen? Especially with loving. You know, loving is not just words, is it? It's action, isn't it? Loving is an action word. Amen? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the what? The truth and the life. 
So Jesus himself is the very definition of truth. How many would agree with that? There cannot be truth without him. It can't happen. Can't be truth without Jesus. He is the truth. Amen? He doesn't just have some truth. He is the truth. Give him a shout of glory this morning. You know the one who is truthful. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. That statement is absolutely true. I can bank on that. Amen? A lot of people and denominations today do not accept absolute truth. They do not accept it. Let me tell you a little story. The two men, two men who went to court over a dispute. One man gets up to the judge and he says, he states his case. And the judge says to him, that's right, that's right. The other man says, hold it. I haven't said my side of the story yet. So he shares his part of the story and the judge says, that's right, that's right. And the clerk gets up in the court and jumps up and says, hold on there, judge. They can't both be right. And the judge says, that's right, that's right. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that people are doing today. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Amen? Just tickle my ears. That's good enough. I don't need to know all the truth. Just a little bit of the truth. Amen? Jesus is the truth. It's not a matter of taste. There's a right way to live and a wrong way. Amen? Let's say that. There's a right way to live and a wrong way. And Jesus is the way. The world will deceive you and try to offer lies for truth. I'm going to give you some of them. Maybe you've heard this. Do whatever you can to seek happiness. That's all you need. Do whatever you can to seek happiness. All you need is some money to be happy. You know what? Jesus didn't say that in his word. I read this. Nowhere does Jesus say, you know what? Your problem is you just need a little bit more money. He doesn't say that. All people are good and good people go to heaven. How many has heard that? I fight that almost every week. All people are good and good people go to heaven. You know, that's not true. That is not true. There's only one way. Amen? How about this one? It doesn't matter what kind of religion you have. Religion is a private matter. True for you, but not for everyone else. Keep your views to yourself. How many's heard that? Oh my goodness. Yeah, just, you know, whatever you believe. That rock, you know, just believe that that rock can heal you. No, that's not truth. I'll tell you what truth is. You need to seek God and happiness will find you. You need to seek him if you want happiness. That's the only way you're going to get it. Amen. How about this one? All have sinned and need redemption from God. There's some truth. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. He is the only way. There is no other way. God is creator. God is designer. God is lawgiver. And his truth is the only truth. Amen. It is universal. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of glory, man. Amen and amen. Just because the world rejects it doesn't make it untrue. It's true whether you believe it or not. Amen? It's true. And we need to put it into practice. Be doers of his truth. Amen? Who wants to be a doer of his truth? Part of being doers is bringing back those who have strayed away. Now, I personally know a few of them. 
Quite a few of them. As I said, I've got a fear now of baptizing. <laughs> we baptized 60 people one, one year, and I haven't seen them since. I've got a fear of <laughs> baptizing people for fear of not seeing them again. We've got some work to do, folks. I have a list of things now when you want to get baptized. Okay, so you're not going to run off after we dunk you. <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's absolutely true. We have to put it into practice. We have to be doers of his truth. The church is a rescue operation for all who have lost are, and are lost. Amen? It's not limited to just brethren. Jesus' vision was the whole world, not just us. It was the whole world. Look at Luke 24, 46 and 47. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached. In his name, all nations beginning at Jerusalem. All nations. Not limited. Amen? Here's our part. Here's our part of all this. John 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Amen? We got to put faith to action. Hallelujah. And so... That's why James says, faith without works is dead. We have work to do, folks. We have work to do. We've heard from the Lord. Get your coveralls on. Amen? Get your coveralls on. Seems that I heard a message one time about coveralls. I wonder if the coveralls have any dirt on them. <laughs> Are they still brand new? <laughs> Amen? We need to get our coveralls on. For this year. Listen to this statement. I love this statement. Here's the best statement from Jesus. The greatest statement from Jesus. John 10, 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be, what? One flock. And one shepherd. One flock and one shepherd. I believe Brother John was saying the other day, I noticed on his Facebook, somebody had asked a question and John really cut to the truth immediately. And I was like, yeah, that was my confirmation for this message. Because he, he said, he said, God, he said, by the way, Jesus didn't say, I will build my churches. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. I will build my church. He only said one. He didn't say 24,000 and five new ones every day. One church. Amen? We are a part of that one church. So there's got to be one truth. No, the mission did not end at his dissension. Or ascension. The church needs to get passionate about evangelism. We really do in this year coming. Evangelism is not a bad word. In fact, it's a biblical word. <laughs> the world may speak of it in a negative way. And I think many Christians have bought into it. Amen? It's a lie. It's not the truth. Evangelism is a good word. It's in the word. It's in the word. That's why James says, He who turns a sinner from the air of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Would you let someone die and do nothing? You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't, would you? So I believe God is calling us today to become rescuers. He said, rescuers of the church. And rescuers of the lost. So I've received marching orders from the Lord. I know that. And I know I heard them. And I know what he said to me. 
And so I'm going to make it a point to become a rescuer this year. He said, this is a year of rescue. Think about people that used to be part of the church. If you know them, give them a call. We missed you. You need to come back. We need to get you back. Amen? Not to fill the building, but to get them back into the kingdom. They need to know. Amen? God is calling us to become rescuers. Sometimes people wander into deep water and need rescued. And God is asking us to become that lifeline. Amen? So, I believe we need to accept the challenge God has set before us. Who's going to join me in the coming days, the coming weeks, coming months? I believe that's what God is asking us to do. Let's become be part, be part of his rescue operation. I was looking for one of those uh, EMS vests. I was going to wear it today. I could, well, <laughs> Wayne says I can lend you mine, but I've seen his. <laughs> it's kind of got a lot of bling and everything on it, <laughs> which I thought was awesome, by the way. And yes, yeah, someday I would love to borrow that. <laughs> but I was going to wear one, thinking, okay, I need an EMS. That's a, that's a rescue operation. Vest, put it on. So not just, a, you know, just as a, as a prophetic statement that, yes, Father, I'm going to receive that word that you said to me, and I'm going to step in, and I'm going to do everything in my part with your help to become a rescue operation. Amen? So are you with me? Are you with me? We all know people who have gone astray, and we all know people who are lost. And I believe that God has specifically given us a word that this is it. Amen? So, I mean, this is great. This is great. Sometimes we've got to wait a few months, and God will say, okay, I want you to do this. But right off the bat, right off the bat, starting the year off. And so I give him glory and honor for that. So, yes. And come on up, Linda. Linda has received a word. I think it just fits right in. This is awesome. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Um, okay. Um, the Lord told me to go and anoint the front door. And so I went and I said, Satan, you're not welcome here. And then I saw a white horse outside, just outside the door. And then I came back in and I saw horses in the sanctuary. Sanctuary. Uh, but um, without saddles. With saddles, sorry, with saddles. But the Lord said, I have horses ready, but I haven't any riders. I'm looking for men and women of this church to climb up on the horses that I have prepared for battle. Are you ready? If not, then get ready. For the trumpet is about to sound. And those that aren't ready will be left behind. Rise up, take hold of the reins, for I'm calling for the warriors to unite to go forth to win this town. For that is the kingdom work I have called you to do for me. Get ready. As the trumpet will be sounding, the new is here. Amen. And of course, the Lord always leads in battle. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Did you catch that? Did everybody catch that? That's great. That's great. I'm reminded of what Cindy brought that one day. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Well, we're ready now. By the way, horses. The place is filled with horses. Yes. That's what my name means. Philip means lover of horses, so I'm all good with that. I'm all good with that. In fact, that, that black and white one over there is mine. <laughs> Amen. So, the challenge is out, church. And I think it's up to us. We have a, we have a battle plan set in place for us, and I think we've got some work to do. We've got uh, uh, a great word on the horses are ready. 
uh, we just need to pick one and get on. Amen? Start riding it. And so I just want to thank everybody for joining us. This is awesome to be able to see you and to be able to be a part. And uh, as I said, we're still uh, missing a piece of equipment that will intensify this a little better. But we got excited and wanted to launch it today. So I'm hoping everything went well on your end. And look at that. That is uh, Ralph and Vicky. Oh, look at that picture of Ralph and Vicky has got. I like the, yes, isn't that beautiful? Yes, that is awesome. So, I have a pillow at home made by a beautiful lady, uh, and it has a horse's head on it. I think she knows, again, I'm not going to mention any names, but her initials are Christine Peterkin. <laughs> I have a, a circuit rider uh, pillow at home, which is awesome. It's just a big, oh, it's so cool. So, Hello. Kojiko issues. Some have gone. Okay. Well, I'll wait to close in prayer. Um, does that mean I, uh, all, Gord, I, it's still being taped? Okay. So, because I want to just share this with people out there. Maybe you've joined us and you don't know the Lord. And you're wondering, you know, yeah, how can I... Become Yay. a part of God's Woo. family. Just say this prayer with me. Yay, Ralph and Dear Vicky. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask you to forgive for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer this morning... We want to hear from you. Just drop us a line at our web page or even talk to us on our Facebook page. And uh, we want to pray for you and just want to just encourage you and, and uh, welcome you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a mansion waiting for you. Amen and amen. And so we lost everybody, I think, right? So I'm just going to close in prayer. Just going to close in prayer and then we'll open it up at the end for personal prayer. Hey, everybody's coming back, so. Amen. Yep. There's the picture right there. I got that pillow of the horses, of Christine's horses. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Oh, my Lord. Yes, I have that pillow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look at that. God is just... Oh. So awesome. So cool. Come on, join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that, Father, that you don't just leave us. You, you, you speak to us. You continue to guide and keep us and, and direct us. And, Father, we believe we have heard straight from your throne room on this matter of rescue. And, Lord, I just pray for everybody listening that you would put in our hearts the spirit of rescue for your church, for your lost, for the ones that have gone astray, believing in, in things that are not true. And Father, I just pray that in the coming days, weeks, and months, that you will continue to download to us missions and visions and dreams of what it is you want us to do in this part of your vineyard. And so, Father, I pray a blessing over each one that has joined us. Father, that they would have... Uh, an awesome day today that Lord that we could go and chew on your word even more father that we would just ask that you would give us uh, revelation on the matter of hand father on this word and so father I just pray that over each one of us bless each one now Lord as we go in your name into the mission field in Jesus name we pray Amen and amen. So thank you for joining us this morning. It was an awesome start.